Hello, I'm Alistair Hosshauer Barry, one of the senior associates here at Gill Jennings and Every. Welcome to our introduction to patents talk from, from our series of expert talks on intellectual property IP. We split this patents introduction into three parts, of which this is the first. As an overview of what the three parts will cover, part one will cover what a patent is and why you may wish to apply for a patent. Parts two and three will cover how to identify an innovation when an innovation may be patentable, what goes into a patent and the process and a patent application goes through to get granted, followed by how the patent can be used once it's granted. Um, so take a look at each of these after each of parts two and three after this if you'd like some more information on these points. Starting with what a patent is, patents have existed in one form or another for hundreds of years. What they're used for has evolved over time, but now there is an international consensus on what a patent is and its function. At its most fundamental, a patent is a legal document that sets out details of an invention that the document seeks to protect. A patent is also a piece of property that is owned and can be bought, sold, mortgaged, and put to a number of uses. A patent protects the innovation it defines by giving the owner a monopoly over that invention. What that means in reality is that the owner of the patent is able to stop others from using the invention defined in the patent. This makes a patent a negative right. Importantly, a patent is not a positive right. A patent does not give the owner the ability to use the invention. You are only able to use an invention defined in your patent if nobody else has a broader patent that your invention falls within the scope of. One important point about your monopoly is that a patent gives you a limited right per country in which the patent is granted. Patents are highly jurisdictional in nature, so your monopoly right will only cover the countries in which you have a granted patent for that invention and not in other countries. The length of time your patent lasts is usually 20 years from the date of filing. There are some countries that this can be adjusted, a notable example of, of which is the US, where the patent term can be lengthened if there are delays caused by the US Patent Office during the application process. The number of countries that offer this sort of patent term extension are quite rare, however. Looking at why to apply for a patent, there are many reasons to apply for one. Uh, there is typically little value in seeking to get a patent granted just for the sake of owning a patent. Uh, it's always important to weigh up the costs of obtaining a patent against the value and benefit that a patent can bring. However, a lot of people don't know necessarily all the values and knowing some of them will help this. And there are generally more benefits than people are aware of. People can group these benefits into a number of areas. Um, I have broken them down on this slide into benefits being traditional areas, corporate and indirect. The more traditional areas are to use a patent, to use a patent or group of patents are to stop competitors and to build a revenue stream. When stopping competitors, this can be to block a competitor from acting by establishing your negative right, your monopoly over an invention and enforcing it against other people by means of litigation or by writing to them and seeking to stop them using an invention that might fall inside a patent. An additional benefit of a patent is that it can be used to block others from getting a patent by the publication of the patent application or patent. Other publications also do this, but a patent publication typically carries more weight with a patent office examiner, which simplifies matters when you're trying to stop a competitor from getting a patent. In terms of a revenue stream, patents can be licensed to other parties for royalty payments. This can bring money into a company and supplement the money already being made by the company from marketing the invention themselves, or can allow another company to conduct that marketing and selling of the invention whilst the owner of the patent can sit and gain the revenue from royalties of those sales. The corporate benefits can come from a single key patent to an industry or from a number of patents in a particular area. These can be used to trade with competitors for access to competitor IP to area and areas that that is blocking, for example. In recent years, this tactic has been used by the likes of Apple, Samsung, and Microsoft and Google to either gain access to areas they wish to operate in by trading access to their own IP and areas that that covers, 
or to negotiate for a royalty trade-off in their favour because they have more patents in a particular area of interest than another and usually similar sized competitor at that point. The indirect benefits are ones where patents and other IP can provide value to a business more widely than just within the IP sphere. Since patent is a piece of property, it can enhance the value of a company by being an asset of that company. Patent also establishes something unique about a company that allows them to stop others acting in an area which itself has some value. If a company is looking for investment, then having a patent or a patent application pending shows the competitor is innovative and looking to protect their turf. This is attractive to investors since it shows a company is serious about protecting their innovations and cares about maintaining their USP increasing the possibility that investor will make that investment. Patents and other IP also give inv investors something they can offset their risk against. They're taking a risk with giving money to a company making investment and since the IP has value that creates a counterbalance to that risk. The final item on my list here is a tax cut. For profitable businesses that have patents covering the UK a corporation tax cut is available for profits earned on products covered by a patent. Since the cut, a tax cut um, reduces the outgoings of a company, the benefits I hope to this are clear. The list set out on this slide is of course not an exhaustive list and individuals and companies will find other benefits to patents as well over and above these. So these are just some examples and you can look for your own benefits from patents in various aspects that they can touch on. If you're interested in learning more about patents and other IP, you can look on our website. I'd also be happy to answer questions by email or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I've really only scratched the surface of the topics I've mentioned in these slides. So take a look at the other parts of this talk and upcoming sessions that will cover other IP rights and delve into more detail on the various aspects of these. Thank you for joining us.